the 5-HTHC receptors, uh, mainly in the brain, and this is the, the midbrain, uh, the choroid plexus, pons, striatum. Um, it has not been isolated uh, from peripheral tissue, so it's very intrinsically located in the central nervous system. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's often localized on GABA, glutamate, and dopamine neurons, uh, where it acts on cell bodies, um, sort of exciting those neurons. So things that release GABA, glutamate, and dopamine, neurons that release those things, these serotonin receptors will bind to sort of the base structure and excite it enough to start an action potential so it will release its, its neurotransmitter. Um, and it's, it's very intrinsically connected to feeding, social behavior, uh, sexual activity, or sorry, they're inhibited by it. <laughs> In the 5-HT2A, pretty widely spread, again, the gastrointestinal tract. A lot of the stuff um, is very, like the distribution is just so vast that it's hard to comprehend. On to sigma receptors. Now, sigma receptors are very interesting. Um, I don't have a nice crystal structure for, the, for them yet because it hasn't been done. This is a theoretical structure. Um, it's got the three hydrophobic regions, um, so they think it looks something like that. Um, but recently, 2009, I remember writing a paper about this um, in one of my classes, uh, but dimethyltryptamine was found to be uh, an endogenous ligand to this. Um, so basically you see here, you have uh, a tryptamine molecule, and then they replace uh, the R1 and R2 spots, um, either hydrogen or a methyl group. Um, and they did a similar thing with a phenethyl amine and a hydroxylated phenethyl amine. Anyways, DMT is right here, this third column. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. But it's very exciting to find that because before, they didn't have a lot of endogenous pathways. Um, they just had, there's this one neurosteroid, neural active steroid that uh, had some binding effects. Yes? Um, was that middle column there, are those the two C's? The, These? The, the, yeah. Yes, the, yes. So this, um, this is a methyl group, yeah. methyl, this is a, a monomethylated, uh, or like monomethyl tryptamine, I guess. This is just tryptamine. I mean the middle three ones, the, like, the nephthalamines, are those like the, is the bottom like 2CB? Um, I'm not sure. It just says it's just NN dimethyl um, phenethylamine. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Like 2CB, I, I actually I don't know the, the, the structure, but it might be some sort of analog of it. Um, so other sigma agonists you might be familiar with include uh, cocaine, diacylmorphine, PCP, angel dust, whatever, floxamine, which I think is an SSRI, um, methamphetamine, um, so on and so forth. Uh, but the sigma, sigma receptors, um, right now, some people believe that the sigma receptors they're very sort of promiscuous. You can't really identify them on their own because it seems that they're distributed around. Um, and they think that it might act as an intracellular signal amplifier. <coughs> so the sigma receptor will bind to a complex um, like the IP3 receptors on the endoplasmic reticulum and encourage that complex to fire. It's also been found in new complex with potassium channels on the outside of the cell. Uh, this, this sort of, uh, to give you um, an idea of the distribution of the sigma receptors, they're found throughout the brain. Uh, this is your, whatever, if you do, do a subtraction, and that's where they are. But they're, they're also found throughout the body.
Um, and so the mechanism of the sigma receptor, as far as we're concerned, um, in, as it relates to dimethyltryptamine, um, is its actions in raising the, the calcium levels again. So here it is, here's a sigma receptor bound to the IP3 gated calcium channel in the endoplasmic reticulum, which was previously activated by uh, DMT's effects on the 5-HT2C molecule. Um, but DMT is also within the cell because it was transported in there by the CERT, by the serotonin transporter, and it's binding to the sigma receptor and amplifying that signal as well. So more calcium, more neuroactivity, more cellular activity, more neural activity, more neurotransmission. So again, just there's a massive amount that DMT binds to, um, suggesting to me at least, and like the, the variety of receptors that it binds to suggests to me um, that it's very sort of intrinsic um, as sort of a, a root or a, like a baseline function or something like that. Yeah, so are there any questions? Yes? Um, if serotonin acts like it's um, fight and flight, then how come when you smoke DMT you like lie down? Uh, that was just the 5-HT2C receptor. Oh, okay. So, again, because of this happens, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, it's a, it's a crazy thing. Um, it's acting on all sorts of systems. And, yeah, right now they haven't got it all figured out. Again, we haven't done binding studies, or they, these are only binding studies, just how well the molecule associates with these receptors. It's not actually um, whether it's activating the receptors or not, so I can't tell you in detail what systems is go are going on there, um, but possibly just, you know, your body's overloaded, doesn't want to stand. Yeah. Okay. In that image you had which showed the distribution of the sigma receptors, is that so is that, is that like the difference of two fMRI scans up before and after you've given someone some kind of... Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so that's the yeah, so the... Yeah, that's, a, that's an agonist um, of the sigma receptor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, all this research um, and studies going about DMT, are there other similar studies about maybe other tryptamines, say AMT, or maybe other analogs of such drugs? Or is kind of DMT like the big one that's kind of? Um, it's not. It's not a huge one. Um, they're starting to do more research about it, um, but a lot of a lot of hallucinogens, you're not going to get direct studies like with each particular one. Right. Um, just because, like, you probably won't get funding for that work. Um, what you what you will get is a lot of um, and like and sorry, and you might not even be able to study um, the, the the system that you're trying to study with that molecule because it might be too promiscuous. Um, what you'll get is a lot of these things, like um, selective agonists of particular systems, so that they can sort of piece together sort of little bits of certainty. Um, yeah. So there's there's not there's not a whole lot of money going into figuring out the agonist and antagonistic um, actions of a lot of molecules. Um, back in the day, LSD was was pretty sort of standard when you're talking about 2C or 5-HT 2C agonists and hallucinogens. There's yeah, but there's there's a lot on DMT because it is again. Um, becoming more accepted as a neurotransmitter, like an endogenous neurotransmitter. So when we, sorry, because I'm, I'm really ignorant to kind of bio side of things. So when you look at kind of the subjective effects, you know, whatever, LSD versus DMT versus AMT, whatever. So is that, does that have to do with kind of the different receptors that they interact with, kind of the different combinations that produce? Yeah, the different combinations and also um, the different affinities um, you might only get partial activation of certain receptors um, by certain molecules. Um, I know 
Yeah, I, I read somewhere that LSD and DMT bound differently to the 5-HT2C receptors. Um, something about one phosphorylating more than the other. Um, but yeah, like all of these molecules have different structural, um, different structures, right? And different structures mean different, different uh, physical properties. Um, so even I take like okay, so toad or whatever bufortin, bufortinin, um, dimethyltryptamine, they're very similar molecules. There's just this hydroxy group. If you switch this hydroxy group with a methoxy group, it would be a totally different experience as well because you're changing the electrical environment around this area. And that's going to affect how it binds to this receptor, or this part of the receptor as opposed to that part. One more question. Yeah. Can you just quickly go over, you know, if you're aware of kind of the legality of DMT as you know what? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, preparations of these of those plants and whatnot. It would be, I think, schedule one. That being said, there are a lot of them are ornamental. So, um, so do we know? Do they know where like DMT is made in the body? For sure. Um. I know it's been found in high concentrations in the cerebral spinal fluid of like they did lumbar punctures, and that's um, a lot higher concentration than where it was originally isolated from, I believe, rabbit or rabbit lung or like in the lung, whatever. Like most of the body, it's kept at very low concentrations. Um, the, the largest concentrations was the cerebral spinal fluid, um, but a lot of the problems with studying DMT um, and actually finding out like where it's where it's all localized is that it gets metabolized very fast. Um, so areas of high production might not necessarily have a high concentration of DMT in like the homogenized tissue, um, but they might have like pretty high concentration at the synapse where it's having an effect. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, we, we're really lacking um, a lot of technology to get, to get in there and figure that out. Um, they, like, they could do studies, they could do more studies um, especially um, like mRNA studies, whatever, find like just mapping where uh, the receptors or where the, the enzymes are being <coughs> produced. But yeah, there's, there's lots of research to do. Okay. So you were saying that um, DMT is linked to near death experiences as well. So is that directly tied in with the calcium levels within the cell? Or, or at least. Do those severely impact uh, near-death experiences like that? Um, or how is it? Quite possibly. Okay. Because um, you were saying that, uh, of course, uh, cell germination is high level of calcium, right? Mm -hmm. No chemists. But... Yeah, yeah. No, again, this is like this, it's all sort of uh, postulated at this point. Nobody's done these studies. Um, but I would, like, it's, it's, it's plausible. It makes sense. Makes sense for the body to just be like, all right, let's let's release all the calcium now and relax and go back to the dust we came from. Um, but that there is, a, they are there. There's been some studies. Um, I didn't include them in this presentation, but there's been some studies um, looking at sigma agonists, um, including DMT, as uh, well. I guess not not actually DMT, um, but selective sigma agonists. Um, in combating uh, certain types of cancer um, because there are higher um, concentrations of this receptor in um, certain types of cancer cells. Um, so by stimulating the sigma receptors, uh, you're basically like overloading them with calcium and causing them to die, right? So that's, a, that's an interesting way. Um, and I'll, I'll probably be looking into that more. Anything else? All right, thank you very much.